Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers and sisters. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi'adadi ma ahata bihi al-muk. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina. Wa habibi qulubina wa tabibi nufusina wa shafi'i dhunubina. Abi al-Qasim al-Mustafa Muhammad. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين سيما بقية الله في العالمين روحي وأرواح العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Islam as the last religion and this book uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Qur'an, as the last revelation from uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has teachings in which uh, different prophets, uh, before uh, the last prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, they had and they brought uh, their teachings uh, through revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and each one of these prophets they had their own uh, religion sometimes they had their own books and some of them uh, they were uh, nabi or prophets that they were following uh, the previous prophet for example uh, in the case of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam we have uh, prophets that they used to live uh, at the same time uh, the time of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, but they uh, f they were following uh, the teachings and the religion uh, of Ibrahim alayhi salam as we uh, study different religions from uh, Nabi Adam alayhi salam uh, till the last prophet, uh, we uh, can see the uh, progress of these teachings. Uh, for example, in terms of um, ethic uh, and akhlaq, uh, we can see the progress from uh, the uh, previous prophet to the last prophet. Uh, we have this slogan uh, from uh, our beloved uh, prophet uh, Muhammad uh, وسلم, which he said uh, uh, I have sent down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I've signed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, teach uh, the highest level of akhlaq. In another word, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me to you, uh, this nation, to the people of this uh, earth in order to complete the previous religion, the previous teachings in which the different prophets they brought uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with the last prophet, we see the uh, progress of akhlaq and uh, we had different uh, virtues in akhlaq from different prophets. But, with, but when it comes to uh, the last prophet, we see this, uh, this akhlaq and this ethic is progressing. And the prophet, the last prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi he completed the teaching uh, that uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had to uh, his servant. We see in his characteristic as the, uh, the exemplar, we see that he is uh, indeed, uh, he has the highest level of akhlaq and ethic among even other prophets and he also uh, taught the highest level of akhlaq to uh, muslims and we have 
uh, after the Prophet, we have uh, Imams, which all of them, they, uh, they took these teachings, they learned from the Prophet uh, and they embodied uh, these virtues uh, in their characteristics. So whoever uh, recites these beautiful ayats, these uh, live miracle from uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, they can see uh, in the uh, characteristic, in the life of these divine individuals. Uh, we don't only have these uh, beautiful teaching in book, we have even people and divine uh, leaders, imams, the prophet, that they actually uh, implemented all those teachings from Quran in order to show people that this is possible and this is something that we are capable of doing it. Uh, otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not, would not demand or command or ask things that uh, it's not possible and we cannot uh, do it or we're not able to do it. Whenever he asks something, it means that it is possible. And uh, servants uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is aware uh, fully uh, of our uh, potential. So whenever, whatever he asks, it means it is possible. And in order to show people and uh, show the proof uh, that uh, in the Day of Judgment, these uh, Muslims, they cannot say that, uh, okay, we knew, we got your revelation because of uh, the book that we had, but we were not sure that, uh, is it possible or not? Uh, they could ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Day of Judgment uh, that you could uh, send some people, some uh, human that they embodied all these virtues and that way we could see them and in order to take example these uh, divine individuals. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout uh, the Prophet, the last Prophet uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and also uh, through uh, Imams, Bibi Zahra sallallahu alayhi wa and even uh, those awliya Allah, those people that they uh, they really uh, took all these teachings and implemented in their life, and they became actually uh, as Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam said that I am Quran or not. I'm uh, there is Quran that you have it in your uh, in your bookshelf. Uh, all Muslims they have a. Uh, physical uh, Quran if they don't have more but Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam he is uh, the uh, embodiment of Quran he is actually uh, an, an example that all these uh, virtues that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, in this book embody in the characteristic of uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam and all other our uh, beloved Imams. So that is about uh, the ethic and akhlaq and the completion uh, of akhlaq and ethic. But also more than that, even uh, certain spiritual uh, concept that we have uh, throughout different religion uh, with uh, different prophets, they brought different teaching. But if you look at all these uh, divine teaching as uh, as one. If you uh, just think about all these prophets as one mission, which is the uh, fulfillment of the uh, purpose of uh, our uh, creation, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted uh, from a human being. Uh, and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, created all of us as a human being from the uh, first to the end with, uh, with, uh, with potential. And Allah knows best uh, what we can do and what we're uh, capable of doing it. So with different prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought different messages. 
But uh, after all, all of them, they came from one source, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of them, they had one aim, and that is uh, perfection. That is uh, for human, for man to get uh, closer and seek proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But after all, when you look at the last religion, the uh, religion of Islam, uh, the book, the last book, uh, the last divine book is Quran. Uh, you can see the progress even in terms of those spiritual um, uh, dimension of, of religion, those spiritual concepts that we have it uh, throughout all different prophet, uh, religions previous, uh, prior to the last religion. But with the religion of Islam, you can see the progress. For example, we have a concept in all religion, and that is uh, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have this concept of prayer and uh, connecting or uh, making a very special bond and relationship with our Creator, with our uh, Lord. But when we have, when we look at the last religion, we see that that progress is actually happening. We see that uh, different forms of even uh, prayer, and we have uh, different even uh, level of um, of humility before. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have from the beginning uh, and to the last prophet, the prophet of Islam, we even can see the progress even in prayer, in fasting, for example, even in seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is something that uh, from uh, Nabi Adam, uh, we have stories that indicate that Nabi Adam uh, ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Hawa, his wife, uh, asked forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can see in the case of Musa alayhi salam, which he uh, himself, at least in one occasion, uh, I remember right now in, in, in Surah Al-Qasas, uh, which uh, the uh, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi faghfirli. Uh, oh my Lord, I have, um, I have did, did um, injustice uh, on my nafs, on my uh, spirit, on myself. So faghfirli, so please forgive me. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, accepted his forgiveness, right? But when it comes to the uh, religion of Islam, when uh, the last uh, package of this teaching, this divine uh, teaching revealed to the Prophet uh, of Islam, وسلم, and uh, beside that, which is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Quran, beside that we have other teachings with which we receive uh, throughout uh, traditions, narrations from uh, the Prophet uh, وسلم, and also uh, other imams, we see that progress even in uh, spiritual and religious uh, concept that we uh, knew from the beginning. When it comes to Islam, we see that progress. For example, in the case of uh, seeking forgiveness, when you see the ayats of Quran, uh, it, it's, it's another level of uh, forgiveness. In some religion uh, throughout the uh, the time throughout uh, years uh, they uh, they had certain changes by themselves by uh, people other than the, uh, a prophet throughout the time they had uh, this unfortunately uh, we call it tahrif right different concepts started changing and these people they started uh, changing the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, in some religion, in the case of seeking forgiveness, they had uh, and they brought a new concept in this, uh, in, in this case, which was uh, uh, to confess uh, to a spiritual leader. It can be a priest or, uh, or any scholar, and in that religion, they had this 
uh, concept that they had to uh, confess in front of a, a spiritual scholar, a spiritual uh, leader in order to in, in order for their lord to accept uh, their forgiveness right but when it comes to islam we see that uh, this uh, seeking forgiveness is actually a uh, secret a private a very special um, relationship that a servant has uh, with his or her lord we are not even allowed to open our uh, secrets, our past, to tell others uh, about our uh, sins or mistakes or shortcoming. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that you need to just come to me. There's only one way that you can uh, seek forgiveness and that is through me, right? In some religion, uh, they, uh, to to, to solve this problem that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would uh, accept forgiveness. Uh, so they, they brought new uh, teachings in their uh, divine religion. For example, they said that because this prophet was, uh, was tortured, was, uh, became martyr uh, for the sin of believers. So that way... Uh, these people, they had uh, this idea, this belief that because of that prophet uh, became martyr, um, from that time to the end of the time, the day of judgment, uh, we believers can be forgiven because of that, uh, that sac sacrifice that our prophet uh, made, right? But in Islam, we see it that this is not the way it works, right? Uh, no one can uh, sacrifice his or her life for uh, other peoples that they, they're going to come after him. New generation, they do whatever they want and they always have a, a way to, uh, to, to, to go back to the uh, previous step or position that they were. For us and our religion what we say we say that no Allah doesn't need uh, any anyone even prophets even messengers to uh, sacrifice their life for other peoples that they're going to come new generation next generation uh, for their sins that doesn't make sense right unfortunately we have even for uh, in in Islam uh, we have some people that they uh, they sometimes uh, indicate and even sometimes they advertise uh, the, the same teaching in the teaching of Ahlul Bayt uh, for example in the case of uh, Imam al Hussein wassalam, we see that some people they, uh, they're saying that uh, if, if you love Imam al Hussein uh, they uh, Imam al Hussein wassalam, sacrificed his life and also his companions, his uh, family's life for the uh, for the shafa'a and intercession of uh, of uh, his uh, his followers, even next generation to come. And the same teaching that we have in some other uh, other religion, which is uh, basically in in Quran and even in uh, traditions from the Prophet uh, وسلم, and also uh, other Imams uh, that doesn't make sense. We don't have any uh, proof for that and in fact we have proof to, um, to object that even teaching. Uh, one very famous ayah uh, we have إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Indeed Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala would accept uh, uh, deeds and righteous deeds from those people that they are pious, right? So the key to acceptance of deeds, righteous deeds, is one condition. And that condition is piety. So a pious person, a pious believer, what they do is they have this very strong uh, will uh, and decision that even 
God forbid, if they commit sins, they seek forgiveness, right? They're not saying that because we believe in so and so, so whatever we do, whatever we uh, do in terms of sins, shortcomings, uh, wrongdoings, uh, we will be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or any uh, other uh, person. They don't say that. They have this idea that we, even if we commit a sin, we're not insisting on doing that because of certain belief that I have, because of a certain love that I have in my heart. I can't do things and I'm uh, sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not judge me based on his justice, right? And in fact, in the teaching of the Prophet, in terms of intercession, I didn't want to talk about uh, this uh, shafa'a tonight, but uh, it's something that when we uh, open discussion, we have to uh, complete this discussion because sometimes it brings uh, questions uh, on, on the table. So when we talk about intercession uh, and shafa'a, that's certain in the teaching of Qur'an, uh, the Prophet and the Imams alayhim as-salatu as -salam, we have it, uh, this, uh, this belief that intercession is something that uh, these divine uh, leaders, these divine individuals, they will do uh, in the Day of Judgment. And in fact, even in this world, they have the ability to, to do that. And that is not something uh, to like contrary to the uh, decision or the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, in fact, it's by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Quran when we talk about shifa'a, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah even Ayatul Kursi when he says that there is no one who has the authority to do shifa unless by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is something that it is in Quran uh, and even those uh, divine individuals that they have this uh, power and authority and position to do intercession, to do shifa ah, is by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's certain indeed they will do shifa'a for the lovers uh, and the, for the followers uh, of uh, the Prophet Ahlul Bayt wassalam. But there are other traditions and narrations that if my followers, if Shia uh, don't do this and that, different narrations focusing on different um, act of worship, sometimes a certain righteous deed, they're not going to have uh, this shifa'a from us, right? So there are conditions in which a Shia or a follower need to fulfill in order to uh, to to deserve uh, to, uh, for for that uh, for that intercession or shifa'a. So it's not something that uh, the promise, there is a promise for all these people. Uh, whatever they do doesn't matter. So in the Day of Judgment, uh, Imam al Hussein or even other Imams والسلام, will come and um, take these people's hand and um, enter them to, to the heaven. Uh, no, in the Day of Judgment, there will be judgment. There will be uh, judging from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there will be uh, intercession too and those intercession even for the lovers of uh, Ahlul Bayt والسلام, even for them there are uh, conditions that they need to fulfill on, in order to uh, be worthy uh, for that uh, shifa and intercession so we can see this uh, this uh, progress in terms of virtues, in terms of even uh, a certain concept, as we said, uh, in terms of uh, seeking forgiveness, and even in terms of uh, seeking uh, and, uh, and appreciating and uh, doing shukr uh, 
uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that gratitude. When we look at the Quran, when we see the traditions, uh, we see that uh, this religion uh, through uh, the divine book, through the uh, traditions uh, from all of these uh, uh, spiritual uh, leaders, we can see that we have a very complete picture of gratitude in the concept of, of shukr. We can see that in this religion, uh, they help us to look from different angles on this beautiful concept, this very uh, useful and even beneficial in terms of even this world, this concept, this concept of gratitude through different narrations, even they, uh, they told us that if you want to have a uh, pleasant life, if you want to have a good life, you need to practice gratitude, even in terms of the worldly uh, life, this uh, life, let alone uh, the year after. No, if I want to really enjoy my life in this world, I need to practice gratitude. And without that, I'm going to uh, always uh, run for things without even paying attention on things that I already have, without even using uh, those favors from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my uh, benefit, right? So to complete this topic, uh, the concept of gratitude and this progress, uh, we have to look in a different type of gratitude and shukr. For example, in the teaching of Quran and the tradition from the Prophet and the Imams, alayhim salam, we see that the concept of shukr at different levels. For example, someone can be grateful for a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, some people, they only uh, express this gratitude uh, through words from their tongue, right? They say, oh Allah, I am grateful for you. Or someone else does something good to them, help them they go to those people and they uh, thank them, right? Through tongue with words that they can express uh, this gratitude to those people and ultimately to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that is only one level of gratitude. Another level is through heart. Sometimes I may say something to show this gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or other people. But in a heart, I really don't mean it, right? I may say things that I really fully don't, uh, don't feel it, right? In order to have this gratitude and express my gratitude, uh, through my heart, I need to really uh, believe uh, that this favor is from uh, this individual or ultimately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is basically the next level of uh, gratitude. And the highest level of gratitude, which uh, makes uh, this concept of shukr so practical, so beneficial that if we just practice this concept, uh, we will not have many, many, many concerns that we usually encounter in our daily basis life. We'll not have a lot of uh, issues, mental health issues, uh, if we practice really this uh, gratitude fully, not only with tongue or even not only uh, with tongue and heart. The last stage, which, which is the highest level of gratitude, is through
through my actions, I should be uh, grateful. And that means that when uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me something, for example, he, he uh, gave me intellect and all these things that I already have, which uh, we really uh, cannot even count them if we want to really count them. And just think about uh, all these people, if they had this, uh, this practice, that they always look for things that they have already and they want to be grateful for that. So what they do is first they acknowledge it with their tongue and then with their heart. They have this, uh, this belief that I am grateful for that uh, favor. I am grateful uh, for my Lord, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, even other people, when they do uh, things uh, good to us, uh, we are grateful for them. But the last and the highest level of shuk, which is in action, is actually when I uh, use that favor into a uh, good uh, purpose. In another word, if Allah gives me intellect, so the highest level of uh, shuk and gratitude for having this intellect is to use this uh, ability, this favor in my benefit, in, in a benefit that it is going to help me in this life and the hereafter. In another word, if Allah gives me something, I'm not going to waste it, right? In another word, if Allah gives me something, I'm going to use that favor into my benefit, a benefit that is going to benefit me in this world and also in the hereafter. So you see that a believer, even in the darkest time of his life or her life, they can find things to use them and to be grateful for them, for those small little favors and to take them and uh, and use them as means for their benefit. It means that uh, even uh, in a in a time that they are not really uh, wealthy, they always can find things to uh, improve uh, their their present life. And that moment they that they are, there's no. Uh, there's no dead uh, end for them, right? They always have something to be grateful for that and also to use them in their benefit because they know that if I don't use these favors, I'm actually wasting them, right? If I have wealth, for example, and I don't use them, and that is actually I'm wasting those, uh, those wealth, I can't do things with that wealth, uh, sometimes even increase them, and also using those uh, wealth and those uh, potentials into my benefit or other people's uh, benefit to help others. So all these things, you see it in one package, and that is the concept of gratitude. We uh, When we look at this gratitude, everyone, uh, all uh, man and human being, they know uh, that showing gratitude and being grateful uh, is virtue, is a good characteristic, is a good trait that uh, all of human being needs to have it. And a lot of them, they actually have it in some level. But when we look at uh, this concept from uh, Islamic point of view, we see this completion. We see that even in concepts of, uh, of religion, such as gratitude, we see this progress. We see that uh, with the teaching of Quran, with the teaching of Prophet uh, Muhammad وسلم, we see the whole package from different angles, even in these 
uh, concept that makes them so practical that we can inshallah use uh, this uh, in our daily basis we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, help us that we uh, can uh, really show our uh, gratefulness to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our uh, deeds our ibadat and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins, forgive our fathers, our mothers, uh, and those people they have right upon us, our teachers, all um, those people that they uh, did uh, uh, something for us. And uh, we're grateful for them and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive their sins and elevate their status in the uh, day of uh, judgment. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, give uh, shifa and quick recovery for those people that they are uh, sick, especially those people that they are uh, part of our community or even uh, the relative. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, hasten the reappearance of Imam al ta'ala Fajr Sharif and make us among those people that they help him, they, they defend him, and they, uh, they, they use. They're the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given them into the benefit uh, of the path of uh, the Imam of our time, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.